Hello and welcome to the Starting Adeptus Sororitas video series. For those unfamiliar with my Admex series, this series is intended to cover everything from the first purchase to the first 2000 point army list and everything in between for the Adeptus Sororitas army, also known as the Sisters of Battle. Sisters of Battle, in my opinion, are one of the more interesting armies in the world of 40k, as they are very similar to Admech in terms of the overall concept of how the army is designed, I would say, and how it can function. However, while the Admech are designed as more of a shooting army with the ability to have incredible melee choices, it seems like the Sisters of Battle are designed to be more of a melee mid-range army that also have incredible shooting choices so in that sense they're a little bit of an inverse. Though both of them have a rather high skill ceiling and both of them have an incredible amount of special rules that can be very complicated for new players. Though I will say that the sisters probably have the higher skill ceiling over Admech just due to how many special rules they have and how those special rules apply to models selectively. So in a general sense they're more complicated. More so, both the Admech and the Sisters of Battle have really incredible models that I just think are fantastic, and most of the units in both armies can see play in tournament competitive lists, so you have a great variety in terms of how you play the armies, and in terms of what you play in the armies. The one thing that's true about the Sisters of Battle is that the Sisters of Battle are a rather expensive army in terms of dollar cost, and they are a very hard army to play, so they have a very high skill ceiling, and that can be a bit of a challenge for new players to get into. This series intends to tackle not only understanding how the Sisters of Battle work, but also how to optimize your cost effectiveness with the Sisters of Battle. The primary thing that hurts the Sisters of Battle in terms of their cost is the fact that they don't have a start collecting kit like almost every other army. So while most other armies have a kit you can buy that contains rather good models at a discounted rate, the Sisters of Battle don't have one. Though there are ways around that and we'll take a look at that in this video. So let's take a look at what you should buy and what you should avoid when making your first purchase and moving towards your first 500 point army list. The first thing you should buy for your Sisters of Battle army may surprise a lot of you. And that first purchase should be the Castellan Robots. According to the Games Workshop website, the Castellan Robots are part of the Sisters line and as a good servant of the Omnissiah, you should always buy your robots. Joking aside, let's take a look at some of the first purchases you can make to optimize your gameplay. As the Sisters of Battle don't have a start collecting kit, I thought it would be fun to try to make my own start collecting kit and optimize it as much as possible in terms of cost. For my start collecting kit, I decided to pick two different boxes that combined together give you a great base for your army. The first of the two boxes is the Mortifiers. The Mortifiers are a great pickup because you get two in a box and each one only costs 60 points. So altogether they cost 120 points and give you an incredible amount of bolter shots as well as incredibly good melee. Because they are great in both shooting and melee due to the amount of shots and melee attacks they can put out, they actually go into so many different lists because you can run them as either a ranged threat or a melee threat. And if you choose to run them as a ranged threat, you can utilize them to screen some of your ranged units against melee attacks due to how powerful they can be in melee despite having a good range attack with their heavy bolters which have recently been buffed due to some changes within the 40k rules. And if you look at most of the tournament lists out there, a majority of them do play Mortifiers just because of how powerful they are and they're a really cool looking model on top of that. The second box I would pick up in my theoretical start collecting kit out of the two boxes would be the basic Battle Sisters Troop Squad box. The great thing about this box is it can build into your only troop choice, the Battle Sisters. It can also build into special units like Celestians and Dominions. It can even build into Retributors if you get enough of them due to coming with special weapons. You would have to set them aside and build your own Retributor squad. It'll take a little more time and take a few more boxes. You wouldn't be able to do with one necessarily unless you buy bits online, but it's definitely one of the more versatile kits within the Sisters army. And now you might notice there's no HQ choice between these two boxes. Well, the solution is rather simple. The Canonists and many other characters within the Sisters army are simply Battle Sister units that have a little more flair to them. So what you can do is you can take your Battle Sister squad, build your troop choice out of them, and then set aside one Battle Sister and convert her into a Canonist. This is very easy to do with the bits you're provided and the base size matches so you don't even have to worry about that. This will save you $35 based on what the prices are on the GW website. While the Canonist model is perfectly fine, the problem with it is, is that $35 for a single model, it is kind of expensive and it's not one of those big flashy models that you sometimes get for $35. So really, unless you have extra money to burn or you want to pick one up later, I would 
suggest waiting to buy a Canonus, and I would say waiting and just using a regular sister battle that you've converted up a little bit using the different bits in the box to make her look more like a Canonus is probably the way to go. Additionally, while you're at it, if you take one of the Battle Sisters models, especially the one with the Simulacrum Imperialis, you can actually use the different bits for that Simulacrum and turn her into an Imagifier. This is one of the Lee choices. So by buying this box of Battle Sisters, you've actually picked up a lot more than just that one box itself, as all of a sudden you've picked up a Canonus, an Imagifier, and eight Battle Sisters. So you've lost two Battle Sisters and picked up two characters that total out to $65, which you've saved. So in this sense, when you've gone in your two Mortifiers, or two special characters, and your eight Sisters of Battle, you've gone into about 300 points, and that's a very solid start, and you've saved a bunch of money on those characters. So this is very comparable to other start collecting kits, even though it ends up being a little more expensive than the average start collecting kit. Now on the other hand, if you're really not sure what to buy, or you're not sold on the Mortifiers, let's take a look at some alternatives that you can pick up over the Mortifiers. Well, the first thing you can pick up is obviously more boxes of Battle Sisters, and the reason for this is, as I mentioned before, is the Battle Sisters box can be built in a variety of different ways. And many of those options are very playable. As Celestians see tournament play, Battle Sisters are obviously your core troop choice and really your only troop choice. So they're going to see play and you can build all kinds of different characters, even Retributors, which are a fantastic heavy support choice. So really I'd say before buying Retributors, maybe look at buying more Battle Sisters and just setting aside those special weapons. Outside of more Battle Sisters, you can also take a look at something like the Sisters Repentia, which are fantastic and right now see very heavy tournament play just to their ability to put out so much damage and melee that they're ridiculously powerful. However, you do want to run these in something like a Rhino because they are rather fragile. So while they're able to put out incredible damage within melee, they do need a little bit of protection. And while you're at it, one of the cheaper characters that's only $15 is the Preacher or Missionary. So you can buy one of those to put in the Rhino and then use the Repentia Superior that comes in the box as something else, maybe even a Canonist, simply because the Repentia Superior is not particularly great on her own and a Canonist is usually just better than her. And the Preacher and Missionary do a great job of buffing the Repentia's attacks. You put the Preacher in with them and just have them absolutely obliterate anything that they get close to once they're in melee. And I should mention that the Preacher and Missionary are less than 50% of the cost of any of our other character choices. One other box set that's very good for the sisters is the uh, Seraphim box set, which can also be built as Zephyrims. Both of them are pretty good picks, and both of them are pretty cool models. You can build either one out of the box set, and both of them will do a lot of work, though both of them are a little more specific in how you use them. So you definitely want to think about why you're buying them before you buy them, as you might pick them up and find out that's not the type of army you're trying to play, whereas the Mortifiers can fit any role pretty much. And there's also the Exorcist tank, which is fine. It is a little pricey in terms of points and in dollars. However, it's much more of a niche pick that you really have to think about and might not be good enough for 500 points due to how it functions, though it's still probably perfectly fine in 500 points. Now before we wrap up the video, let's take a look at what you shouldn't buy as a new player, or at least what you shouldn't buy as your first purchase or for your first 500 point army list. As we already know, I've suggested not buying any of the characters that can be built out of a regular Sisters of Battle model, simply because they're incredibly pricey and should only be bought if you have a big enough budget that you're not worried about spending $30 on a single model. Some of the models are incredibly cool, but again, if you're trying to save a little bit of money, it's best to hold off and buy them a little later once you've established your first army list so that you can get some games in and get a feel for them uh, before you commit that much money to a single model that's kind of small in comparison to some of the larger models. The next thing you should avoid buying is the Triumph of St. Catherine. The reason for this is that while the Triumph is a great model, it does have an issue that it's almost 200 points, which would mean that in a 500 point army list, it takes up about 40% of your army, and its main function is generally buffing other units. Not only that, but it only has a movement speed of 6 inches, so essentially you'd be almost taking half of your army up for a model that's incredibly slow moving and isn't incredibly powerful in combat itself. As such, I would say avoid buying the Triumph of St. Catherine until you're at least ready to begin building a 1000 point army. As before then, it's a model that will be very inefficient in your games. I would say it's probably best to wait until you're at about 2000 points as that's when the Triumph of St. Catherine really shines. So once again, it's not because the Triumph of St. Catherine is bad, is that it's dependent on a larger game. After the Triumph, we come to Celestine and Junith. 
Now, Celestine isn't as bad in a small game as the Triumph, and the reason for this is, is that Celestine has a rather quick movement speed at 12 inches, and is a rather scary threat in her own right, so she can put out a lot of damage by herself without having to buff other units. Though you can bring a couple other units with her, such as the Gemini Superior. And the Gemini Superior you want at least one of, because she has the ability to heal and revive the Gemini Superior. While the Gemini Superior has the ability to, to tank shots for Celestine. So it's incredibly good for her to have at least one, and usually you just want one, because she only heals one of them. And at only 18 points, it only brings up Celestine to about the same price as the Triumph. So well, you should take a step back and think about whether or not you want to eat up that many points in a 500 point army list with one model, well in this case two models with the Gemini Superior. It's a lot more reasonable than it is by bringing the Triumph of St. Catherine which doesn't impact the board quite as much in a smaller game as Celestine can actually have a big impact in a small game, though a skilled opponent would still be able to take advantage of you having so few models. On the other hand, with something like Junith, I would actually say that due to her rather low points cost, she's a reasonable pickup, and while she's a little more expensive than you would normally want, coming in at about 20% of your army, she's still perfectly fine as you can take her and not eat up too many points, though she does commit you to a specific order, so do take that into consideration as sometimes you might find that you're not as much of a fan of that specific playstyle of that order, so I would say maybe hold off on her until you get a better feel for how the army plays in different orders with your canonists and then pick her up but out of all the special characters that you have access to she's your most reasonable one that you can kind of buy and field in a 500 point army list without eating up a significant chunk of your army and finally on the list of things that you should avoid is a whole group of models which would be the death cult assassins the crusaders the emulator and the arc flagellants and the reason I would say to avoid these isn't because they're completely unplayable, but rather because they aren't on the same power level as the other choices mentioned previously in the section of what you should buy. And as such, it's usually best to hold off on buying these until you're ready to pick one up to fill a very specific niche in your army list. The one that's probably the most playable is the Immolator as it is a transport but it has a rather low capacity, though fitting in a 5 or a 6 woman squad of sisters could be perfectly fine with an emulator, but you might find that you're just better off with a rhino in many cases, especially if you want to play something like the Repentia. And that's everything for this video, let me know in the comments if you found it helpful, or if I should address certain things for the Sisters of Battle that I might have missed. And as always, thank you for watching, and remember to like and subscribe because it really helps new channels such as mine. Anyway, have a great day, bye.